Hey friends, by now you're probably two weeks into social distancing. Social distancing, this clunky phrase that is probably on all of our minds, but that we've never heard of until a few weeks ago. It's the intentional avoidance of social gatherings and groups and locking ourselves within our houses in order to prevent the spread of disease. And now, many people in Catholic culture have been drawing out the parallels between social distancing and the cloister of monks. So, I figure this would be a good thing to talk about. What is the idea of the cloister? Tam quam sposus dominus patines et alamos to talk about the idea of the cloister, let's first talk about St. Benedict. Now, St. Benedict is known as the father of Western monasticism. He was not the first monk, but he's the guy that made being a monk mainstream in Western Europe. And there were a group of people that St. Benedict couldn't stand at all. These were called the gyrobags. There were these wandering, quote, monks who would go from place to place begging from, for alms from the people and then staying maybe a few nights here and there in different monasteries, eating all the food, using up all the resources, but themselves never doing any work, and they pretended to be holy and enlightened. Think of these people as kind of high school dropouts, living in their Volkswagen vans, going from place to place, traveling the open highways to find themselves, and going to Burning Man year after year. St. Benedict couldn't stand these people, so he introduced the vow of stability. What the vow of stability means is when you enter the monastery, when you take your vows to be a monk, you promise to stay in the monastery until you die. And the reason St. Benedict wanted his monks to persevere in the monastery until death is rather simple. The vocation to the religious life exists in order to become a saint. You become a monk or a nun in order to become a saint. And so everything in their life is ordered towards holiness. The world is fallen, and it's full of all these sinful temptations. You only have to look at the media and pop culture to be convinced of that. So rather than not going outside, uh, what St. Benedict cares about is that his monks keep the monastery of the soul. That's why when the monks would go on journeys, when they came back, St. Benedict would order that they prostrate themselves on the ground and pray for forgiveness for what they might have seen or heard. And this is the message for us. We're all forced to live these semi-cloistered lives because of social distancing. Are you using this to keep the cloister of the soul? Most of us are probably watching more Netflix and YouTube than we do normally. Or are we paying attention to what media we consume? Or are we watching shows that have themes and elements that are contrary to the faith? We're supposed to prefer death rather than even the smallest deliberate sin. Does our internet history show that? Are we living in the world, but not of the world, like Christ says? Furthermore, just like how we have more time for YouTube and Netflix, we have more time for prayer. Monks will have a daily horarium of prayer, Idle hands are the devil's workshop. Are we actually keeping spiritual discipline and, st and praying at set times throughout the day? The monk's life is centered around the liturgy of the hours. This is the official prayer of the Catholic Church. We'll have a video in the next week or so explaining what exactly this is and how to pray it. But if you already are familiar with morning prayer, with evening prayer, or night prayer, Consider adding that into your prayer routine. 
If we're all forced to be cloistered like monks, let's strive for holiness like monks. This crisis has the opportunity to produce the greatest of saints if we take advantage of it. Oh, <laughs>